Hey, it's Lacey, and welcome back to Satoshi Gaming. Today I'm going to show you the beginner's guide, 22 things you should be doing in the first week of any Stardew Valley playthrough. Following these tips will help you have an efficient start to your year and also unlock very important things that you'll want to have early game, so be sure to watch till the end so you don't miss any of these great tips. So let's begin on day one. One of the first things I like to do is clear my pathways to major areas of weeds, rocks, and wood. This is useful because your energy runs out very quickly early in the game, and if you're coming back from the mountains or the center sap forest or wherever you might be coming from, you don't want to be banging into rocks and wood and have no energy and then you have to mine them out of your way and then you're sluggish trying to get back to your house. <laughs> it's not fun, trust me, you don't want to do that. So be sure to clear your pathways of the debris as soon as you can just so you can walk around your farm more easily. Number two, plant your parsnips that were left for you in a package in your house. You want to get these parsnips in the ground as soon as you can so that they have a chance to start growing and you can harvest them as soon as possible. So you want to clear a little path on your farm in the dirt, till, till the soil with your hoe, and get your crops in the ground and water them. Make sure you have the debris that's right around this area clear so that they don't damage your crops in the middle of the night. Planting your parsnips is also part of one of the first quests you get, so you'll want to get them done as soon as you can because you can get some money for completing those quests early game, and you'll need that money early on. Number three, meet the villagers and complete the introductions quest as soon as you're able. Completing the introductions quest will give you some money, so you'll want to meet people as quickly as you can. And it's also a pretty easy thing to do once you've run out of energy for the day, so you can just wander around and talk to as many people as you can. A lot of people seem to travel through the middle of Pelican Town um, in the mid-afternoon, early evenings, so it's a good time to come to town and chat with a lot of people all at once rather than hunting them down in their individual houses. You can also hit up the Star Drop Saloon late in the evenings. A lot of people will be around there uh, at nighttime, so try stopping in and chatting to a bunch of people there. Uh, especially if it gets towards the weekend, that's always a good place to find everyone. If you're playing the Stardew Valley Expanded mod, you'll notice even more people wandering around, and so you'll have a lot more people to talk to, though not all of them count towards the introductions quest, so just keep that in mind. Okay, it's day two. Number four, craft a chest. So you should have gotten enough wood by now. You'll need 50 pieces to craft a chest, and I'd recommend making one of these. You'll want to keep your wood for something else later, so only make one chest. And uh, stick it anywhere on your farm that's easy to access, and this is a great way to pop things in that you don't want to carry around because you have very limited inventory slots, so put things in your chest that you don't need on your person. Number five, you'll get a letter from Willie. Hello there, just got back from a fishing trip. You should come down to the beach sometime. I've got something for you. So you'll want to head down to the beach and see Willie on day two. Once you arrive, a cutscene will be triggered and you'll chat with Willie. Following through with this cutscene will unlock a fishing rod for you, so now you'll be able to fish in any of the water in Stardew Valley. Number six, if you're playing Stardew Valley Expanded, give Morris a birthday gift. It doesn't have to be anything good, but just hit him up, and it'll also finish the How to Win Friends quest for 100 gold if you've already finished introductions. Number seven, visit the library and donate your first artifact to Gunther. You can get a strange doll at Aurora Vineyard in the northwest corner of Cinder Sap's Deep Forest if you're playing Stardew Valley Expanded, so it's a good way to get an artifact really quickly and start your donations with Gunther. You want to get going on these as soon as you can, as they reward you with some very good items for certain things that you donate, so be sure to donate any artifacts you come across in the game. Day 3. Number 8. Find the Forest Sword. If you're playing Stardew Valley Expanded, head to Cindersat Forest and go through the westmost exit into the deep forest, and go all the way west and then south and you'll come across the Forest Sword. This is a very good item early game, as the sword you usually get from the mines isn't very good, and uh, you can use this one for quite a while, and it'll make things a lot easier for you. Number nine, make sure you go to bed before 2 a.m. every night, or you'll fall asleep on your farm, which will result in a loss of money. Day four. Number 10, go to the Blue Moon Vineyard to get a quality sprinkler. On the fourth day, you'll want to head up over to Sophia at the Blue Moon Vineyard during the daytime. It'll trigger a cutscene and you'll get a free quality sprinkler, which is a huge advantage for this early in the game, so be sure to go visit her. 
I've posted a video on how to buy sprinklers and how to unlock these sprinklers in more depth, and I'll put the link in the description down below. Day five. Number 11, harvest parsnips. This will complete your getting started quest and earn you 100 gold, so congratulations on your first set of crops. You might also find that you have a golden parsnip in here, so be sure to put it in your chest and save that one for later, because you will don't want to sell your gold parsnips because you'll need them for the community center. Number 12. You'll get a letter in your mailbox that says, To our valued Jojomart customers, our team members have removed the landslide caused by our drilling operations near the mountain lake. I'd like to remind you that our drilling operations are entirely legal. Blah, 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 blah. They basically removed a landslide that was blocking your path. So now you can head through the mountains up to the mines. So we're going to go north to the mountains and we're going to meet Marlin in the mine. If you're playing regular Stardew Valley, the mine entrance will be right there. Otherwise, head up the staircase if you're playing Expanded, past the Adventurer's Guild, and into the mine entrance. There we'll find Marlin. So we'll listen to his cutscene, we'll get a sword, and access the mines for the first time. Number 13, go mining for copper ore. You don't need to find an ore vein, you can just break rocks or boxes to find that one piece of copper ore and one piece is all you need to trigger a cutscene the following day with Clint to unlock the furnace recipe, which you'll need to make ingots. Number 14. Reach level 5 in the mines to activate the elevator. The elevator basically gives you a quick way to travel to and from each level of the mines in increments of 5, so it's a huge time saver, so get that unlocked quickly. Number 15. Save 2,000 gold and upgrade your backpack. I try not to spend any money until I get 2,000 gold so I can get my backpack upgraded to 24 slots. Having a second row of inventory makes a huge difference early game because otherwise you're constantly running out of space when you're out exploring. Day 6. Number 16. Go to town during the day and unlock the community center. You'll speak to Lewis, who will invite you inside the old dilapidated community center. It clearly is in need of repairs, and Mayor Lewis needs your help to fix it up. This is a main focus of the game throughout your playthrough, in that you'll either need to find all the items to repair the community center, or you'll need to pay for all the items to repair the Joja Mart warehouse. So you can choose which way you want to play here. I always prefer to do the community center bundles because I think it adds a more fun to the game versus just mining for gold. But if you know that's your thing and you want to join the dark side, go for it. <laughs> So you want to unlock the community center as soon as you can so that you know what items you need in order to finish this community center as quickly as possible. Once you finish the cutscene with Lewis in the community center, you'll want to head inside and interact with this little plate on the floor. You won't be able to read it and that's fine, don't worry about that, we'll get to that later. Number 17. Craft a scarecrow after you reach level 1 farming. So you'll want to get a scarecrow as soon as you can because otherwise crows will eat your crops in the middle of the night and that's the worst. Days 7 through 9. These don't need to be done in a necessary order, so we'll just go right ahead to number 18, meet the wizard in Cindersap Forest. You'll receive a letter in your mailbox after you've interacted with that plate on the floor in the community center that we talked about. So get that letter and then head northwest to the wizard's tower in the forest. Once inside, the wizard will greet you and your journal will be updated and you'll want to complete this cutscene with him to understand the secret language of the Junimos. You'll need to understand the Junimo language in order to interact and read the plates on the floor of the community center, so be sure to complete this cutscene. As I said before, the sooner you know what items you need to complete the bundles in the community center, the better. So do this as soon as you can. I try to do it on day 7 right when I get up. After you finish your cutscene with the wizard, you can head back to the community center if you'd like to interact with the plate on the floor, and you can now read it now that the language of the Junimos has been deciphered. So you can browse around here and see what's needed for the bundles to be completed, which will help you progress in the game. You can also access this from your inventory menu from the little tree icon in the top right corner as a shortcut versus coming back here to the community center each time to see what's needed. Number 19. Don't forget about Lewis's birthday on the 7th. You'll want to go ahead and give him a gift. And if you haven't completed the How to Win Friends quest for 100 gold, this is a great way to finish that quest too. Number 20. Turn in all your spring forage and unlock the pantry and the fish tank. 
So you should have been foraging for items anywhere around town that you found, and once you found all four of these items for the spring foraging bundle, which should be fairly easy by now, uh, you'll want to turn those in. Turning in your first bundle will unlock two more rooms in the community center so you can see what else you need to progress this community center progress. So you'll unlock 30 spring seeds for doing this first bundle, as well as the two additional rooms, so it makes it a very valuable thing to do early in the game. You can plant those spring seeds to make a very tidy little profit, and also now you know what you need for the fish tank and the pantry, which uh, the fish tank is very important to know what fish is needed because some of them are only available in certain seasons, so get on this one. <laughs> Which brings me to number 21, go fishing in the rain. The seventh day should be a rainy day and you'll want to go out and catch some fish. Some fish are only available to catch on rainy days and if you don't want to wait till the following year to hit the rainy day spring fish, you'll want to do this as soon as you can to make sure you've caught them. So you'll need to catch a shad and a catfish both from the river on a rainy day in spring. And then you'll also want to catch an eel in the ocean while it's raining at nighttime. So if you get those three fish caught in the rain, that'll satisfy your requirement for the three fish that you need to catch in the rain in spring and won't make you wait till the following year to do it. When you've caught the fish, feel free to go place them in the community center. Number 22. You'll want to gather 300 pieces of wood and repair the bridge on the beach as soon as you can. I try not to spend any more wood than I need in the early game, so don't get too excited about decorating this first week. You'll want to save this wood for the bridge. So chop down as many trees as you can, and if you need to, you can make field snacks by using the seeds from the trees that are dropped, so you can keep chopping wood uh, over the course of time without getting exhausted. Once you've gotten your 300 pieces of wood, you'll want to head down to the beach and interact with this little mark here that says, use 300 pieces of wood to fix the bridge. And yes, we would like to do that. Have a little break here where you'll hear some repair noises being made and now your bridge is magically fixed. So this unlocks the east side of the beach and it's important because a lot of coral and seaweed and items will wash up over here and you can make a tidy little profit early game by gathering items from over here. This also happens to unlock the area where the old mariner is, but you don't need to really worry about him quite yet. Uh, he'll be something you need when you want to get married. So those are my 22 things that you should be doing in your first week in Stardew Valley. If I left anything out that you like to do the first week of your games, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what I maybe should add to my list. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. It helps the channel a lot. And also don't forget to subscribe to see more Stardew Valley and Stardew Valley expanded videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.